click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of machine design 1. We are about to solve second numerical on screwjack design. So here is the problem statement. Design a screwjack to lift 100 kN load to a height of 50 cm. So that's the given data for us. The weight 100 kN, the height of lift is 50 cm. Let us make it to 500 mm. So let's begin with the problem. Very first thing, as usual, we'll do the material selection. There are different material combinations possible, but we are going for plain carbon steel for the screw material and bronze for the nut material of course you can vary the materials but these are the some of the materials which are predetermined pre-selected and suggested of course so from design data book again you can go for the plain carbon steel where you'll find its yield strength at 400 newton per millimeter square compressive strength and tensile strength more or less are similar for the ductile materials of course you can change the, them by some margin say 10 percent or 12 percent but they are more or less same so let us consider that both of them are same here so if we have to consider factor of safety again for this screw jack kind of thing factor of safety may vary from 3 to 5 and that's why we are taking it 5 for the this problem so considering factor of safety 5 the allowable stress no matter whether it is tensile or compressive will become sigma y divided by fos calculation part i have already done for us so this becomes 80 newton per millimeter square so basically 80 newton per millimeter square is the basic value for us to design the given screw jack screw we will select the material for nut afterwards of course superficially we have said that it's a bronze the material properties we will consider subsequently there we come with the first parameter design that's called core diameter of screw now we know that as far as the given strength or the compressive strength because the screw is going to withstand the compression of the given load and that's why the compressive strength will be given by the load divided by area of cross section now let me mention that since it's the threaded part we are going to consider the core diameter as the diameter for the strength and hence it's w by the core diameter basically is the formula now the strength we already know because we have considered the maximum value of the strength and that comes out to be 80 if you go for the calculation thirty nine point eight millimeter of course we have to go for the preferred series and that's why we'll consider so this is what the value of the core diameter which we have to select now there are two important things if you look at the functioning of the power screw or functioning of the screw jack particularly it will undergo two additional stresses and those two additional stresses are the caused because of bending moment and the torsional moment so the value of diameter which we have obtained based on only the compression which is w in our case we have to increase it by some margin so we have to go for multiple trials so let us go for the first trial as i said stresses will be induced because of torsion and bending moment and hence we have to go for the preferred series and that's why let the core diameter which we have obtained is 40 let us increase it to 60. Now using this core diameter values we can go for the selection of the particular value so with core diameter as 60 millimeter we will have the mean diameter and the pitch so from the preferred series thing from the design data book again we will say that nominal diameter not the core diameter the nominal diameter is 60 mm which is available the pitch associated with it is 7 millimeter so we have to go for the mean diameter and we have to go for the core diameter now there are standard relations that we know
core diameter is given with the help of nominal diameter which we have selected dn and the pitch. The relation gives us core diameter is basically the nominal diameter minus pitch. The nominal diameter that we have is 60 and the pitch that we have is 7. We can increase the pitch also based on the given value. So, in that case, if you look at the preferred series, it was not actually 7, it was actually 9. So, let us make it 9 and with that, The core diameter obtained is 51 millimeter whereas the mean diameter is given by the nominal diameter minus half the pitch. So if we work out this example we will get it 55.5 millimeter so there is what the selection of the bolt is done now once this bolt is selected we have to say whether it is safe or not so that is the next step so that will call trial one but if trial one fails we have to go for trial two and subsequent trials so in trial one what we have is nominal diameter 60 millimeter pitch as 9 millimeter the core diameter we have obtained is 51 millimeter and the mean dia is 55.5 millimeter. Now, the different ways screws are modified or screws are produced with number of starts. Number of starts 1, 2 or 3. Let us go for the beginning stage that is number of start 1. So, let the screw has 1 start and hence the lead lead is nothing but the distance covered the uh, the vertical distance or the horizontal distance covered by the screw in one revolution will be equal to the pitch and that's why it will become 9 millimeter so that is what the bolt selected let us move ahead we know that there is a standard relation between the helix angle lead and the mean dia and therefore the lead that we have is 9 millimeter. Mean dia we have 55.5. If we solve this relation, we'll get lead angle, helix angle is equal to helix angle equal to somewhere around 2.95 degree. Now the second thing which is important which is angle of friction now for this combination steel and bronze coefficient of friction you can refer to the design data book again for this data the coefficient of friction between the steels and the bronze range from the coefficient of friction ranges from 0.1 to 0.18 now when there is no condition specified let us go for the extreme case where coefficient of friction will be maximum and that's why let mu is equal to 0.18. But there's another relation we know. Coefficient of friction is given by the tan of the angle of friction. And hence, angle of friction can be found out as, angle of friction can be found out as 10.2 degree. So, we have got both of them the angle of friction and the helix angle. There we obtain both the angles which are required for a screw, the helix angle and the angle of friction. Now we know that here in our case, the angle of friction is greater than helix angle and hence we can say that it's a self-locking self-locking screw that means in idle condition when it is not stop it will not come down automatically it will remain in its condition because friction is helping it to remain in that condition the next thing that we are going to talk about the torsion or the torque which is acting on the given equipment that is screw jack 
Now there are two ways torsion is acting. One because of the torsional aspect, the actual torque being applied. Second thing is because of the bending moment, the screw is going to sustain. And that's why we are going to consider it in different manner. We already know that there is a standard relation for the torque being applied because of the torsional aspect and that is the given expression. Let us substitute the values given. And hence, after evaluating this expression, we'll get so that is what the torsion we are expecting. The next thing is torsion because of the bending moment. Now, there is one important aspect that the load is going to act on the screw of length L1 and we are going to consider the whole length of the screw including the collars also and hence we will consider it to be L1. Now how the bending is going to vary now, during the failure we are going to consider that one of the ends is going to be fixed and hence This is how the bending is going to be and that's why we have to consider the whole length. Now we already know that the length, I'll write it down here. L1 consists of the height of lift plus the height of nut and plus the extra collar height. Now, of course, we are going to do this calculation for nut height afterwards, but for time being, I'm using the value directly, which I have calculated for you separately. Of course, subsequently, we will look at it. So height of lift that we already have is 500 mm plus height of nut somewhere comes around 50 plus height of collar somewhere comes around to be 20. And that's why the whole calculation becomes 570 millimeter and that's why mb that is bending moment will be given by load this calculation and there 42 becomes 2 millimeter so these are two important torsion things that we need to consider as far as the design of this particular screw is concerned so that was from my side in part number one in part number two we are going to check the safety of this selected screw and if it is not safe we will go for the trial number two also thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe to ekeda